eventually the age of transparency. And, you know, it seems like right now is the age of information. Um, it seems like probably within the next 20 years, uh, it's going to be impossible for corporations, governments, whoever to kind of get away with some of the same shit they've been getting away with this entire time, because there's going to be multiple ways of fact checking, of looking at reviews for certain products and services for uh, all those things, you know, critiques of all sorts. So it's just going to be more and more transparent, I think, anyway, as time goes on. So that's just another one of the many beauties of technology, you know, and I would say it's safe to say that more people are waking up to with just uh, the information that we have at our fingertips. And, you know, in the age of information, ignorance is a choice, you know, and many people are starting to understand that any question could be answered literally by Google in enough research time. Uh, you might not get 100% most accurate answer, but you'll get somewhere in the ballpark and you can use your own discernment to kind of put the puzzle pieces together and find out of the truth that kind of sits well with you. Uh, and hopefully there's some, you know, truth there, objective truth, and uh, also some methodology behind it and whatnot. But um, yeah, I think it's, it's only going to be a matter of time. And like I said, until the age of information kind of shifts into the age of transparency, I can't, I can't foresee it being any other way at this point. I mean, even just the past four and a half years now that I've been doing my Facebook pages, I could tell you there's been a dramatic change and uh, uh, the amount of likes and the amount of people who are commenting and actually engaging with posts and people who you could tell are still in their kind of uh, beginning stages of what we kind of joke around as the wake up sheeple phage stages, you know, <laughs> or it's just wake up, wake up. And you could see that and they go from there to the anger phase. And then a lot of people, you know, hopefully don't stop climbing the mountain of enlightenment at that point and still kind of continue to try to learn and build on their beliefs and their philosophies, but uh, I could personally say for sure that it, there's been a dramatic increase, and that's just looking at social media, you know, um, and of course going to a few festivals and conferences here and there that I, I try to go to. But I mean, and there's people, a lot, plenty of people who have been doing this a lot longer have been saying the same thing that it's, it seems like there is a shift happening, and especially I think it's even more expedited with the whole Hillary uh, Trump debacle. And so many people are so disillusioned with these two choices. I mean, people are hungry for this type of information and they don't know exactly where to get it from and how to put all the pieces together. But they kind of have seeds planted here and there and they're starting to kind of put all put it put it all together. And it's an exciting time. It's definitely an exciting time. And we're, we're all a part of it. You know, you're doing your thing. I mean, everybody's doing their thing. And there's so many different facets. You know, people are doing art. People are doing music. People are doing, you know, social media side of things. People are writing books. I mean, there's everybody's kind of coming together for this this and it's it's awesome it really is kind of a wonderful time to be alive it let a fuse inside of me i knew somehow i needed to get involved i needed to do something even if it was just part-time uh whatever it could be that i could do i needed to get involved and i also knew specifically i wanted to get involved with police, police activism just because fuck that shit like that pissed me off i saw police throwing people slamming old women uh, little kids i mean they were totally indiscriminate with their violence and just a bunch of thugs putting guns in pe peaceful people's faces i mean that's not really uh, a moral uh, just society you know and, and we see that with the drug war and it, it's yeah it's definitely insane uh that we've come to this place in our society where people still believe that prohibition and yeah enacting violence initiating violence on peaceful people who have broken these you know these quote-unquote laws and that's completely acceptable and I think it's just another sign that, you know, we've been dumbed down to a certain extent and we've also uh, just let our apathy completely, you know, take over our sense of empathy, I guess, you know, and trying to, to relate to the people who are in these situations. I mean, it's easy to use some of the political talk and the sophistry, you know, to make these huge promises on how you're going to eliminate drugs and take out drug dealers and whatnot. But when it's a, an innocent veteran who's, you know, came back from Iraq war or whatever, I mean, is it really as consistent as like the politicians are really leading on because, you know, they have a plant in their in their their bedroom or whatever. I mean, is that something that we should initiate violence for and for somebody who's basically being peaceful? I mean, they're not hurting anybody. They're not initiating violence on anybody else. You know, probably my main stance when I was, you know, doing the March Against Monsanto thing is just like, how do you put the toothpaste back in the tube once right. it's out? Or mm. I mean, I'm sure there's many sayings that kind of are similar to that. But right, right. Uh, it's 
you know, one of those things. And it's so hard to get real legitimate information. I mean, obviously, everything's kind of swayed and influenced by different money and the biotechnology industry is financing the studies. Then how do we know right. how legitimate it is? And then there's the opposite, polar opposite, where it's like, you know, the groups like uh, March Against Monsanto and, you know, they put out their own type of information and it tends to be biased. So, I think, you know, once again, it's just about using your own discernment and kind of trying to find what resonates and actually seems accurate to you. Outdated mentality of, you know, the state is our protector. Right. We are the government. Right. You know, I mean, that was probably their most successful propaganda technique was to convince uh, the majority of Americans that we are the government because, you know, once you give that people that that kind of identity and that almost belief as of, of a responsibility they almost take it personally and well yeah of course i have to vote and of course this is my obligation of course this is what we're doing as the government and mm -hmm. i think that was one thing that i really learned from stefan molyneux is to kind of distinguish i mean the line between the two i mean the state it's its own entity you know and we we aren't the state i mean uh, if that was the case were the jews voting themselves into <laughs> concentration camps i mean I, I know rothbard makes that point you know and it, it's it's seems valid to me you know i mean we're not we're not it's a completely different different entity but at the same time it is just an illusion it's just a, a label that people wrap around themselves to have the opposite rights that we do or they claim to anyway they don't really but they claim to have the opposite rights so. uh Kinsella makes a great point as well and i've been trying to kind of adhere to this just to just try to be as accurate as possible, but he always makes the point that government can be a group of people. It could be your church. It could be a government who's a local body of people who are just concerned about, you know, whatever it may be. So I think the state is probably a little more accurate in that sense, you know, because, it, yeah, government could be, it doesn't necessarily mean they claim the, the right to initiate force and, mm, right. you know, claim the right to initiate taxation for uh, law enforcement and law, you know, and all those things would be a, a monopoly on those things, you know. So there is a little bit of a, dis a distinguishing factor there. And uh, those are things I think that you start to realize more when you start to get into a little bit more libertarian theory and you can recognize that. I feel like that's still things that our friends from the left just can't grasp. They don't see how the state is a monopoly. And I feel like that's one thing that I always try to use against them because they always tend to look at monopolies as being a bad thing as far as big business goes. I mean, obviously, they didn't want to see a monopoly. Nobody wants to see a monopoly with certain products and services. But when it comes to the government being a monopoly, nobody seems to have any problem with that. <laughs> like, how does that right. work? You know what I mean? Like, uh, no, it, it is a problem, especially when we look at law and law enforcement. You know, I mean, they claim to be uh, the final arbiters in all cases of conflict, including cases involving themselves. How the fuck is that not a huge red flag to people? You know what I mean? Like, how is that legitimate in any way? How is that not a conflict of interest? And how come people don't recognize this? You know what I mean? And I feel like to me, whenever we talk about, I, I mean, I'm always answering comments and we're talking to people on police, the police and whatnot. To me, I feel like that's the, the point I try to hammer home the most is that it's a monopoly. Like, how will you ever expect any type of legitimate results, just results from a monopoly who claims the right to, you know, arbitrate mm -hmm. its own conflicts. Like, that just doesn't make sense to me. You know, as, <laughs> as much as I appreciate it, a lot of people waking up to the police state, I just feel like there are certain aspects that, and I guess it, it all kind of goes back to public schools and, you know, the, the whole process of thinking that the state is great and that government is just. And if we didn't have these parameters put in place by government, that there would just be nothing that would ever take its place. And I think that's what a lot of people think is that if we didn't have police, there would just be utter chaos. They don't realize that they're when they say this and they support and endorse the police that they're supporting and endorsing a monopoly. They don't ever think twice about, uh, you know, I don't want to say the word private because that also has its own negative connotations, but just any type of security companies mm -hmm. or uh, people who actually would have incentive to, to run a business that would actually produce results, desirable results for society rather than these undesirable results that we see day in and day out. I mean, I've seen my fair share of police brutality videos, trust me. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's funny when, if you do bring that up and say it, you'll immediately get, you know, the Blackwater comparisons and, you know, these private police and the people, like I said, it just conjures up all these crazy ideas of, 
private, you know, that word private is such a trigger word. Nobody hmm. who within, you know, with outside of the libertarian circles understands that private is actually a good thing and that hmm. it just means that people control it rather than the government. <laughs> As Walter Bloch likes to point out Disneyland, you know, you don't right. see, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, D- Daffy, Daffy Duck or, or Donald Duck, excuse me, you know, blessing people, <laughs> harassing, br- brutalizing people and stuff. You know, I mean, they have private security there. It's just, they, it's behind the scenes. Nobody sees it. If there's an incident, it happens so quietly that nobody, it's not like a big fuss. It's not on the news or people aren't being shot and killed. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's crazy. And I think ultimately what it kind of boils down to once again, is just that uh, it kind of boils down to, I think, state sponsored schools, you know, these indoctrination camps. I mean, we aren't taught critical thinking. Nobody ever wants to de dive into these subjects and really try to understand them and dissect them. Um, a lot of times they're just trying to get the, the quickest answer, quick, the quickest way they could point their finger and scapegoat a certain group or a certain aspect or whatever. And I, like I was saying, I think that's just one thing that's a little disheartening, uh, maybe with the Black Lives Matter movement. I mean, there's a few things that are disheartening with the Black Lives Matter movement, but a lot of people as well who are waking up to the police state, is it's just, you know, they don't, they're not really putting the pieces together as far as what the culprits are. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's, you know, the biggest, the biggest problem is that, yeah, they are paid through taxation. And uh, one of the biggest problems, I've probably named about three already, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of the biggest problems because, yeah, it, it, it definitely doesn't give them any incentive to be accountable to the public. And we mm. see this day after day when every time a police union or a police chief gets up there to kind of feed us lines of bullshit <laughs> that they even know is bullshit. But they have to because if they actually tell the truth, it would be a problem and they're, it, the house of cards would crumble, you know. So they always have to kind of give the narrative that they are they are trying, they are investigating themselves, they are keeping, they are appeasing the public. But more often than not, it's an outright lie. They know it. Um, I can't think of any examples, specific examples right now. But I mean, there's anytime you watch a police chief, you could just see the lies straight through their teeth. I mean, it's almost borderline Hillary. I mean, a lot of times they could probably, a lot of these police chiefs give Hillary a run for her money as far as how much they lie. You know, 